Welcome to the Tepper School of Business Multimedia Series. For more information on the Tepper School at Carnegie Mellon, please visit us at www.tepper.cmu.edu slash multimedia. And now, here's your selected video. We're here with uh, R. Ravi, Associate Dean Intellectual Strategy and the Carnegie Bosch Professor of Operations Research and Computer Science. Google recently announced a partnership to develop open source operating system for mobile or handheld devices. Ravi, what is it that Google's really doing here? Morning, Jeff. The alliance that Google has uh, brought about is, uh, is called an open handset alliance. It's actually a partnership of 34 different companies that Google has put together and leads. And it's an alliance of uh, people that make uh, telephone handsets, software companies, hardware companies, um, developers of innovative little software widgets for cell phones, as well as some uh, other technology commercialization companies. What is this alliance doing? Well, this alliance is trying to create, as you mentioned, an open source platform for running uh, mobile phones that would be available for any handset maker, any developer to work on. Let's look at some of the operators in the space. Um, the carriers in the alliance include Sprint and T-Mobile from the United States. Uh, it also has China Mobile, it's got NTT Docomo, it's got Telecom Italia, Telefonica. Software companies, well, obviously there's Google, which is supplying the internet base and the applications, as well as the basic operating system, as it's called. There are companies that give, uh, uh, that give some support with the GPS-enabled location awareness technologies. Uh, there are companies that do voice based search. There are some that do packet video technologies, there are messaging companies, there are multimedia companies, and there are even some other market enabling companies, uh, companies that make uh, Asian forms, for example, in this alliance. Then there is a few other companies in this alliance that have been successfully involved with commercializing open source software, particularly Linux in the past. They're also part of the alliance. Moving on to the hardware side, you have several handset makers, uh, notably HTC, LG, Motorola, Samsung. And you also have some other chip companies like Intel and uh, communication companies like Qualcomm and graphic companies like NVIDIA. And these are the partners that are going to supply low power chips to power these new handsets that are going to come out, uh, uh, that are going to contain uh, this base operating system. So um, just to summarize, what we have here is, a, is an alliance of 34 different players in the mobile market. And what Google is providing as a base is what's called Android. Okay? Android is actually a mobile uh, uh, telephone platform. Uh, it's based on uh, the Linux operating system uh, for computers. So this is very much like the equivalent of the Windows operating system that runs on your computer. And it's able to translate the commands that you give to the computer into low-level instructions that execute the essence of your command. Now think of the same thing uh, for a mobile phone. And there are many examples of this already. For example, there is a Windows mobile uh, platform uh, which, sub which is supported in many current handheld phones. Uh, Nokia has a very famous platform called the Symbian platform, which is actually the market leader currently for smartphones, which make up about 15% of the, the total cell phone market. Uh, there is Palm OS that many of us who have PDAs and trios have used, right? And there is also um, uh, other uh, platforms that are proprietary like the, uh, the Research in Motion platform that supports the Blackberries. So this is a competitor in that space. And what, it, uh, what is the key difference of Android from these uh, other players is that it is open source. In other words, the, the whole software code or the software stack, as it's called, uh, that supports all these applications is going to be available for everybody to see and tinker with and develop other little uh, applications on top of. Uh, this is not available with any of the other players that we talked about, for instance, Windows, Mobile, or Research in Motion or the Palm platform. So that's a distinguishing factor. Yeah. So um, what Google has done in addition to releasing this platform, it's also very recently, um, just, uh, just this week, a week after it's, uh, it's released the platform, is come up with a developer challenge. It's announced $10 million in prices in two phases. Uh, the first phase to be awarded uh, at the end of March next year, and the second phase after the real handsets based on the
this phone come out in the end of the next year. And it's going to give away this money to innovative new uh, widgets that uh, freelance developers uh, make up uh, that enable more social networking, more uh, better user interfaces, better games, uh, better functionalities that mash up or combine different uh, applications that are available and put them together in a, in a better and more usable application. So Google, in addition to coming up with the base and, and supporting this ecosystem, is also giving some prizes for those who would uh, come up and innovate using this ecosystem already. Ten million, pretty strong incentive. Yes. Um, Why is Google doing this? Why go open source as opposed to you know, the strategy of, of kind of the right. keeping I, it in-house? There's probably two reasons for it. Um, one is Google is not yet a player in the mobile market. And so by bringing in all other kinds of players, like the software companies uh, that have already developed mobile applications, uh, the hardware manufacturers that have mobile-specific chips, the carriers who actually run the network and, and manage the business, Google is actually leveraging their expertise in, in promoting what it does best, which is to try and uh, uh, monetize the user intent whenever they do something related to computing or communication devices and converting that into a very unobtrusive way to provide content and extract some, uh, some revenues from the process. The other reason I think that it's going open is also because that um, in contrast with the iPhone, which is a proprietary platform that Apple has introduced in alliance with a single carrier, AT&T, Google thinks that by going open, it has a better chance of breaking the, the monopolies or the oligopolies that exist in different nations uh, that the carriers exercise over cell phone uh, deployment and usage. So I think there's a two-pronged strategy here for Google going open source with this alliance. As you look forward, especially with the, uh, the, the, the money Google's put on the table now to, uh, to, to in, incent uh, applications and development, what might be some, some, some things we see develop out of this? What are some implications for the, the mobile market? Right. Um, f first, let me address uh, why actually Google is doing this and then move on to some potential um, implications in the market. Sure. Uh, I think the main reason why Google is going this way is that uh, it has probably saturated its usage in the one billion odd internet users in the world. And it's eyeing the three billion odd uh, mobile uh, users in the world, and so there is an obvious uh, strategy of trying to grow its its content market from the internet and try to port it, if you will, to the to the mobile platform. Um, as I mentioned before, Google's expertise is to transfer user intent into monetary value by introducing its enabling applications in a very unobtrusive way. Uh, and it does that by, uh, by placing it in the right context, like it does with ads, or providing the right level of user interaction, uh, for instance, in the case of Google Earth and with Google Maps. Uh, I think the key frustration that Google is hoping to exploit in its move from the Internet to the mobile market is the usability of our smartphones. Currently, uh, different smartphones have very different sets of functionalities they provide. And what Google is trying to capitalize on is to build a platform that hopefully because of the, the size and the extent of this alliance will become more or less universal and will standardize a, a basic uh, set of uh, tasks that will be available for everybody uh, to use in, in the, when, they, when they open up their mobile phone. And so it's really this usability that Google is trying to uh, uh, trying to exploit in trying to provide a better, cleaner interface and a cleaner set of applications to communicate with and using your mobile phone. So uh, by targeting user experience, uh, the strategy of going open source is also a good one because you get immediate feedback. The developers who are developing these user interfaces and these widgets that have their own interfaces have direct feedback from uh, the customers about whether this interface is working or not as compared to someone who is doing it perhaps in a, in a little bit of a vacuum in, in a proprietary platform. So I think going open source also helps it in the strategy. And finally, I think this, this introduction is part of a much larger strategy for Google in entering the mobile market. I'll point out two things. Uh, Google has indicated an interest in, uh, in participating in the auction for the last bit of usable spectrum uh, that the FCC is going to auction off in the beginning of next year. In fact, it has lobbied for and also got the FCC to accept that uh, whoever wins this auction 
would have to be able to support any device or any platform that uh, the mobile user wants in these airways. And so by introducing this platform and developing a little ecosystem around it, Google is positioning itself perfectly to try and make a better case for it to win uh, this last piece of spectrum. The other point uh, that is also uh, indicates, that's indicative of uh, Google's strategy is that it's filed a large uh, number of patents in the last couple of months in the mobile space. For example, uh, trying, to, uh, trying to come up with applications that push ad content using uh, phones, or for example, using the camera functionality in a phone to do search. Uh, and one can imagine you could point your camera and take a picture of, uh, of an object or take a picture of a barcode that's associated with the product and use that as a search term. So Google has already developed a variety of technologies aimed at the mobile space, and it's part of this larger strategy uh, that Google has introduced this platform at this point. If I'm shopping at one store, use my phone to take a picture of a barcode of a product, could I potentially get uh, um, a range of prices from other stores in the nearby area and really smarten up my shopping strategy? I think you can almost do that right now, not with a barcode, but with, uh, with the exact product number. So if you write down Canon S230 or whatever is the name of the camera you're, uh, you're trying to purchase, uh, by messaging that to uh, a Google number, you could actually get back the top three hits. And they usually come with the, if they're sorted by price, you get the top three prices. What this can do is, is much, much more. Rather than having to go through this clunky text interface and having to correct it, um, you could just take a little picture of a, of a one-dimensional or a square two-dimensional barcode. And imagine if every product in the world had a tag, just like ISBN numbers for books, uh, and you, every, every vendor was... Uh, forced because of this movement to display those tags whenever these products are displayed, then you could just take a picture of that barcode and you could potentially press one of several options. If you say click one, you get the set of reviews for this. You get a set of ratings if you click two. If you click three, you get the set of prices. So you can actually do a lot to smoothen this interface and build a whole set of new products on top of this. Um, one of the other big thrusts that uh, in the product space that Google is looking at is social networking. In fact, Dodgeball, which uh, Google acquired early on, uh, was already in the mobile social networking space. So you could have applications where uh, you could flag a few of the friends in your contact list as being part of your close social network. And whenever the cell phones they carry come within, a, within the vicinity of where you are, uh, you might be alerted by, by a buzz on your phone. And that's an example of a service that could easily be written with this new phone uh, or this new platform. Uh, another one is uh, that you could broadcast any events or uh, any activities that you're involved in to the set of uh, friends who are in the near vicinity. You could just set yourself up to do that, sync that with your calendar, and any time you, you turn on the flag to broadcast the event, uh, you could let the closest set of friends know what you're up to in the vicinity. Um, I already talked about image searches, uh, and one could, you know, with the, with the corpus of images that Google is, uh, ac uh, is accumulating and indexing, one could think of, uh, in the future, potentially taking a picture of an object and trying to find out what it is or whether the, the particular features or the model numbers of the, of the object can be recognized, sort of like going on the highway and looking at the cars on the side and trying to recognize what the car is. Uh, maybe you could hum a tune into the phone and try to uh, get it to recognize what the tune was. This is one of the reasons why people still go to old record stores, to try to get the, the, the salesman to, to recognize the song and buy the CD. So uh, having this new, richer multimedia environment uh, with the audio and the video input, with the camera and with the voice, uh, al allows for a much wider uh, possibility of uh, accessing information. And, you know, perhaps the, the biggest, uh, the wildest thing that could happen is we could actually have a mobile web, which is some combination of an audio and a video web uh, that, uh, that is enabled by having your mobile phone, which is a very restrictive interface device, much more restrictive than a keyboard and a screen, uh, but at the same time allows other forms of input, which is, you know, very high resolution images that you can uh, input through, uh, through cameras or, or voice streams or audio streams. So one could imagine you know, browsing the mobile web in the future if, if this platform takes off. So these are all examples of potential uh, changes in the market and potentially disruptive changes that might come our way. 
uh, very exciting, but that this has to come at some cost. What mm -hmm. might be some of the uh, concerns a potential customer or user might have about, about this platform? Right. Uh, there are potentially two different downsides, and I think we have seen some of this already with products like Gmail. Uh, one is security, and the other is privacy. Uh, when I say security, I mean the potential for the Google phone to be more easily compromised. Because it's a software device, one could write viruses or other programs that might, in the context of uh, trying to communicate with your phone to find out where you are, also be able to erroneously introduce other uh, harmful code into your computer. Uh, and I think uh, this has been less of a problem, this, uh, this uh, potential for being compromised, for a system to be compromised, has been less of a problem with the open source systems. Uh, much more so because all of the code is out there for everyone to see. So if there is a vulnerability that is being exploited in writing one of these, uh, these viruses, it's also more likely to be spotted by people in the community and hence quickly fixed. Notice that in an open source environment, people are constantly revising the software and adding enhancement and fixes to it as the versions advance. So I think the threat of security is probably going to be uh, less of an issue. And this is already borne out by the fact that the Android platform is based on the Linux operating system. And uh, the Linux uh, servers that have been out there have been much less vulnerable to, uh, to threats from, um, from viruses and the like than, than the other uh, proprietary systems. So that's, that's one. Probably the greater concern is privacy. And uh, when some of us use uh, the Google Mail product, uh, we notice as we are reading our mail that there are, uh, there are ads for products that are related to keywords in the, in the email that we are reading uh, that, are, uh, that are shown to us. Now, if you try to introduce such context-sensitive ads in a, in a very restricted medium where you have very little real estate, like a small cell phone screen, or when you're talking to someone, for example, before you try to connect to someone on the phone, or before you try to connect to an information service, if you were uh, required to go through an, an, an advertisement, I think that could be quite uh, taken to be quite intrusive, especially if the information that you're being provided is closely related to the context of the call or the, or the, or the information that you're trying to find using this device. So I think Google is going to have a challenge, in a sense, in trying to be as unobtrusive as it's tried to be in the past um, with, this, with this much more restricted device. Um, the, of course, the, uh, there's another side to this. Uh, having uh, this much, uh, much different platform and a restricted platform to, uh, to provide information also allows for the possibility of getting more free stuff as they, as they allow their, the information that they're looking for to be mined and used in providing products. So there is also the other side of uh, people who are not that worried about their privacy, like the folks in uh, MySpace and Facebook, uh, potentially getting free phone service if they are allowed to, uh, if they allow them their, um, their conversations to be monitored and mined and if uh, in return they're going to get a free telephone service. So these are two sides of the same coin. But I think the, the privacy issue is going to be the, the larger one. Uh, can Google make money from this idea? After all, it is a publicly traded company now, and they've passed right. the answer to investors. Right. Uh, we have estimates. Uh, I've seen uh, an estimate of 3 or $4 billion dollars in the next couple of years, I think it's Oppenheimer who made that estimate, uh, growing to you know, 5 to $10 billion dollars annually if they were able to enter this market. Where are these revenues going to come from? They're going to come from advertising, both uh, in the voice medium and in the, in the, in the browser medium. Uh, the key question for the success of uh, these revenues to take off, as they're predicted, is going to be how much of the revenue Google will be required to share with the carriers who pretty much control the, the carriers are the, the cell phone operators like AT&T and Singular, who pretty much control what set of programs and what set of applications any subscriber has on their phone. So it's going to really be uh, a kind of a, um, a dance between uh, these two parties. Uh, if the carriers are allowed to revenue share in every uh, new innovation that uh, someone uh, is able to put on the Google platform, and the ads that are exhibited in it, the carriers would be more willing to let these innovations proliferate in the market. 
At the same uh, token, if Google allows too much of the revenue to leak away to the carriers to be able to bring them to the table, then the profitability of this whole venture will be in question. Uh, so this is yet to be played out. And uh, I think one key advantage that Google has going into uh, this revenue arrangement is that among all of the players in this alliance and others who are potential, uh, potentially going to join it, uh, Google is uniquely positioned to be a host for all the, all the different applications that uh, freelancers might develop. So if someone develops that uh, a Friendster application to track your friends who are nearby, uh, the, the, the only company among all of these companies that has the infrastructure to host and deploy the service on a large scale and be able to collect revenues from those who use this application and take it back to the developer is Google. Google has a Google Pay system that it's already patented to take little amounts of money and put it into the back accounts of potential developers. It also has this huge infrastructure in terms of server farms and hardware where it can host these uh, little applications in the software as a service model. And so Google is well poised to host and deploy these applications, much more so than any single carrier's network is. So even if a carrier is going to be part of this alliance, it's going to have to pull all of the software from Google's infrastructure. And there I think Google holds, uh, holds a good card in its hands in, in trying to extract more of the revenue and uh, also extract more of the control in the process of deploying these new applications. Very interesting. Uh, have, have we, is there something that uh, you all wanted to cover that we haven't talked about um, to now? Th uh, maybe I should uh, make two more points uh, that distinguish Google's alliance from a couple of alliances that have already been uh, out there. Mm -hmm. um, there have been two previous alliances. There have probably been more. There have been several alliances among cell phone carriers, for example, in trying to form uh, a global phone. You know, when you go from one country to the other, uh, cell phone carriers across the world have tried to form alliances so that if you carry uh, a, a locked phone from one company from here to Europe, then the partner uh, in the alliance would then be able to recognize and support your traffic when you're in the other country. And these alliances have all been uh, smaller cohorts. They've been trying, they've, they've kind of not really opened up uh, this potential for innovation in, in the product space. Uh, so I think Google is much more likely to succeed with this much broader alliance. Uh, but other alliances which are very close to Google's effort is one called the Linux Mobile Foundation uh, or the Limo Foundation. And it has as its partners Motorola, NEC, uh, NTT Docomo again, uh, Panasonic, Samsung, and Vodafone. And these are some big players who are not part of Google's alliance, particularly uh, Vodafone. And what they have done is they have already developed a, an open source Linux based platform and they, uh, the, the one distinguishing factor is that the licensing of the platform that they have developed to other carriers and other developers uh, is under a license agreement that they develop which is still open source, it's called a foundation license. Um, there is another model which goes under uh, a more commonly accepted public license called the GNU public license. And uh, this, uh, this model is adopted by OpenMoCo, Open Mobile Communications. And it's actually spearheaded by a hardware carrier called First International Computer. And what this hardware carrier has done is already uh, built up a, a developer kit and, uh, and a phone that developers could test out. And that's slated for release at the end of this year. And notice that this is one year in advance of when phones based on the Google platform are going to be available. So I think what Google's alliance brings to the table is this, uh, is this wide variety of players in the market and also those that have a substantial presence compared to these other alliances. And this Google alliance is really going to make these other two alliances also stronger as a result. Uh, and one other point I'd like to make is that um, despite uh, Google's move uh, into the, uh, the, the, uh, the mobile market, the model it's, it's really trying to push is still the web model. And the web model is one that has worked very well, particularly in the United States, perhaps not so much in Europe and other parts of the world where access to the computer is still uh, a costly proposition. So Google's model of trying to use uh, uh, the experience of someone using a computer to access the web and trying to push that to the mobile market is something that is somewhat US focused. And hopefully 
uh, in the, as part of this transition of moving the web services that it has developed uh, to the mobile phone, there will be some meeting from the other side. There will be people in the other parts of the world who will meet it halfway and adopt these web-based services uh, as, as much as they've been adopting the text-based mobile services. So that's also one of the factors that's yet to play out uh, in this evolution. Sum this up for, for us, uh, if, if you will, Ravi, perhaps from the perspective of, uh, you know, is this a truly disruptive move by Google that could really reverberate throughout the, 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 the mobile network, the mobile market? Um, and, and what might we see really in the, in the short to medium term? I believe this has potential to be disruptive. And the reason I'm cautious in my response is that I think a large part of it is going to depend on how the dance with the mobile phone carriers is going to play out. But whether this plays out slowly or, uh, or rapidly, uh, we are going to see the deployment of one type of phone all over the world. Uh, it's most likely to be based on this platform. If not, it will be based on some other uh, commonly uh, available open platform. And that is going to spur a huge wave of innovation uh, for new products and new functionalities that have never been dreamed up for cell phones uh, before. And that is going to be the game changer. The game changing is going to come from the new products that people are going to think up in their dorm rooms and in their garages, and they're going to code up. And uh, as much as Google is able to uh, provide a hosting service and a platform for deploying the services rapidly, out into all the mobile platforms, uh, the more it has to gain from it. So I think this has a real potential for disruption, perhaps not so much in uh, the carrier markets, but in the product markets, in the set of things that we could do with a cell phone. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Very good. Well, thank you. And uh, we'll uh, keep an eye on this and uh, maybe take another look at it uh, as we see how it uh, develops in the marketplace. Thank you, Jeff.